cause of its image, images. Dr. Art Lind. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to read my beginning here because I, I just figured out what I was going to say. <laughs> In, in April of this year, Mark Antonacci wrote the abstract that is now in the program in front of you. Mark had faith that in six months, I could prove the key hypothesis in the abstract. Namely, this paper hypothesizes that the body suddenly reappeared outside his burial cloth, while the blood marks immediately reappeared at their original locations within the cloth. Well, you could guess I can't prove that. So I, I took the opposite view to demonstrate that, that I could, uh, with natural methods, uh, generate uh, the blood marks on a piece of linen that were like those on a shroud. And I felt very confident I could do it if, if a forger had done it. So first I'm going to show you some stuff about the blood on the shroud. Then I'm going to uh, do show field experiments of painting pig blood on linen. Then I'm going to feel, have field experiments of transferring pig blood on, on human skin to linen. And then lab experiments and finally conclusions. By the way, I'm, I use pig blood because it's very much like human blood. It's actually being considered for use in transfusing to humans. <laughs> Here, here, here you can see the arms that are actually contrast enhanced, and I, I want to call attention to the blood. The blood is continuous. There's, there's no breaks, it, and, and it it's, it's, has clean edges. And then here's the wrist, and that again is, uh, has very clean edges. And the next uh, slide will show what you saw just before. That's the blood on the wrist, and then on the back side, the reverse side of the cloth, you also see the mirror image of what's on the front, and it's just like it except it's fainter. It's, it's not as intense. So uh, our research addressed how did the blood get on the shroud with sharp edges, no smearing, as well as a corresponding blood image on the reverse side. Could it have been painted by an artist? Is there some natural way that blood that could get on, blood on Christ's body could have been transferred to the linen shroud to duplicate what's observed? Uh, time's important because blood clots. So we figured that the, the time between the death and his being placed in the shroud is probably greater than 30 minutes. And uh, certainly, uh, greater than 15 minutes. So what we did is we obtained uh, fresh pig, pig blood and then I attempted to paint it on linen uh, much like the, the characteristics of the linen in the shroud. Okay, here we are standing in front of the uh, Williams Brothers Slaughterhouse <laughs> and this, this door right here is where the pigs go in and then they, they, right about here is where they drain the blood. And I wait there with a little cup. <laughs> and I, I wait to get the blood. And, and I found out that I had to get the blood very soon after the blood came out. If I waited too long, it would really clot before I could do anything. This was uh, a typical attempt. This, this is a piece of linen. And this is the uh, linen that's more like on the shroud. This is a little finer linen. And if I were, were trying to attempt to do it like it's on the shroud, I would have to paint with about this width in order to, to do that. And you can see, I, I just touch the brush to the linen, and I get these kinds of results. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, when when you put it in the cup, this, this pictorial view of what the blood looks like in the cup, right when I put it there, I, I have to say I can't see through it because it's, it's pretty, pretty opaque. But I can tell by my, by my brush that very soon 
It's very watery around the perimeter, and it's beginning to clot in the middle. As it clots, these fibrous networks grab up the red and white blood cells and pull them in, leaving behind the serum. Now, serum is white, but uh, in, there's always going to be some, in, in practical applications, there's always going to be some red blood cells in it. So the watery serum does have a little bit of red. Now, even if I very quickly put my brush down into where the major blood is, as I pull it out, it goes through the watery serum and gets diluted. And so when I paint with it, it's like painting uh, with uh, painting like food coloring on a Kleenex. It just zips. <laughs> it's gone. And uh, what I did then is I said, well, rather than pull the brush out through this watery serum, I'm just going to use a little bit of blood so that I can get at the thing and actually get blood without all the watery serum on the brush. But I found out that uh, it clotted so quickly I couldn't, couldn't paint with a clot. So I went to plan B, try to get uh, pig blood transferred from skin to the linen. And uh, I should say that uh, Dr. LaVoy, Gil LaVoy, did this uh, probably in 1988 or earlier. And I, I, I talked with, with uh, LaVoy, and uh, he has in his book pictures of where he transferred blood a half an hour, one hour, one and a half hours, two hours after putting the um, blood on, on a surface. He used like nine drops of blood. Uh, I could never get that to happen. I talked with Gil many times, and he just said, try harder. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, anyhow, what I did is I got fresh pig blood, quickly dripped it along the length of both arms of volunteers. The arms were hanging vertically down, so the blood ran from elbow down to the hands. I know it's the reverse. In the, in the, on the cross, but I didn't want my volunteers to hold their arms up for an hour or two. After 30 minutes, I would lay the, a linen cloth on the arm in the horizontal position, much like Lavoie said I should do, and then 30 minutes later, remove the linen and check for transfer. I used uh, two volunteers, forearm. <laughs> and this is the typical appearance soon after the blood was applied. I don't know exactly how long it was in this case, but it was certainly not more than, uh, not more than 15 minutes, maybe, certainly more than 10 and probably not, not more than 20 minutes, say. And you can see here, see it's red, a lot of red here, but here it's beginning to turn brown. It's clotted and it's dried, it's dried. And, uh, and, well, I'll go to the next slide, because I'm going to come back to a bloody arm a little bit. So the blood was dried definitely before 30 minutes, and no transfers took place. Uh, well, what I did, I should say, I, I put linen, I think I said I put linen on the, on, the, on the arms as soon as I could get the linen on there. Uh, and, 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 and that's in some cases, in other cases I waited waited 30 minutes, and usually I waited 30 minutes. Uh, more flare, I added more f uh, fresh blood to the arms in hopes that if I got enough quantity, I could maintain the moisture in the blood, uh, and it would delay the, the, the drying. The, the drying was really the problem. After waiting another 30 minutes, linen put back on arms, and no transfers took place. These are the result. These are the linen cloths that I, I took off of the volunteers' arms, and uh, you can see here. There's a cutout here and here. I did that because I, I needed linen for another experiment. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see there are little dots, little dots of blood here, and I'll do it over here. Little dots of blood, and uh, I wondered about that, and I, I found out the reason for it a little later. I can I can tell you. But no transfers of this long streak of blood. Uh, actually, the reason 
Well, let's see. You know, oh, I guess I, I am going to explain. I'm going to explain to you why it was. Late, later in an experiment, I noticed that there were little drops of blood on the top hairs of the volunteer's arm. Little tiny things. And I could put my finger on that an hour later, and I could get wet blood on my finger. And uh, that's the tissue factor with it that the Gil Lavoy told me about. He said some tissues will not clot blood. Can you think of one that won't clot on? It's the inside of your arteries and veins and capillaries. Yeah, so that's a tissue where it won't, won't coagulate. So uh, what, what is the reason for that? And, and of course, it has to do with coagulation. So here's a coagulation cascade. And right here is the tissue factor. And there's more tissue factor here. And this explains it all, <laughs> except this diagram is a nightmare for med students, and I'm not going to even try to figure it out. But that's, that's Gil Lavoie said, that's the problem with the, with the hair. Uh, what's the reason I didn't get a tra transfer? Well, the blood dried too soon. That was clearly the problem. And then it clotted too soon. And then the, I didn't wrap the, the linen cloths around the arms of the first experiments tight enough, so I went back and, uh, and tried to get better contact. So here's uh, the arm of uh, my co-author, Mark Antonacci, and uh, while, I was, wh while I was looking at it, I, I ran my finger across the blood, and there was no transfer, the blood was dry, blood clotted, no smear, nothing. And here there's nothing coming through, but then I noticed there was a little dot of blood here. Then I also noticed that on the arm hairs right here, it looked shiny. So that's when I put my finger on it, pulled it back, I transferred the blood. And so evidently, the tips of the arm hairs have the right kind of tissue where it doesn't coagulate. And oddly enough, it doesn't dry either. Um, and you'd think that the air would cause it to dry, but then that has to do with air movement across, you know, you have like bears and other animals have hair on them, and that, that keeps, you know, the, the, the transfer of heat. It also uh, protects them against wind mo moving across. So the arm hair has probably prevented a good flow of air past those, that blood, and it, it stayed liquid. Uh, here's something that's really important. Here's a picture of an arm with uh, blood on it, and, and notice those wrinkles. I, I've got to come over here and point that out. The arm here is very wrinkled, and that wrinkling is more than a millimeter deep. So uh, it would make it seem very difficult that if you put linen on there, and unless you just pulled it, really, really, really tight, you could not get the linen to touch everywhere aware along those rivulets. Um, and of course in the shroud, along rivulets, they have continuous uh, rivulets of blood on the shroud. So now I move to the lab experiments. Um, I measured the drying and clotting times for human blood to see if it was like uh, that observed for pigs. And I measured the shrinking of the blood as it clots and dries, and I used photography to record the results. Then I also tried transferring dry blood from skin to linen in human environments. Okay, here's um, a drop of my blood on a piece of linen. It's, it's about four millimeters long, it's three sixteenths of an inch in, in length. And that little circle, or semicircle here that you see, that's, that's a fluorescent light, circular fluorescent light that was illuminating my uh, blood. And you can see after, after two minutes, you can see that the reflection of the fluorescent light has changed. That's because it's shrinking up. That's two minutes, then four minutes, more shrinking, and then six minutes, eight minutes, and 10 minutes, it's all over. And if, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it, it, the serum has been left behind at, at 
at these spots. The main thing is, is that this is shorter than this. And it's lost 15% uh, in length in, in two, four, six, eight, ten minutes. It's clotted and uh, it's shrunk 15%. And that's what caused the wrinkling on the, the volunteer's uh, arm. Then uh, I, I set up an experiment where I could uh, hold my finger in place without moving it. And I, I pricked my finger, squeezed the blood, and you could maybe see a little blood on the end of my finger. And I, uh, I photographed it as it, as, it, uh, as it clotted. This is right after putting it on my finger. You can see my, 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 uh, my, uh, the, um, my fingerprint. And, and this is uh, one minute, two minute. You see the reflection of the fluorescent light is changing. And then definitely at three minutes, you can see a margin here where it's attached to the skin and it's shrinking back. And you would see that all the way around the side, except the, the light, the way it's set up, only lets you really see it here. But it's happening all around the blood. And that's, that's one, two, three, four minutes, and then five minutes in the lower right-hand corner. Then uh, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes, 11 minutes. You can see it's, it, well, in the, next, in the next slide, you can see before and after. This was before. This is 11 minutes later. And the blood has shrunk up so much that you see my fingerprints run in this direction. But after, after it shrunk up, I've got wrinkles on the sides. I guess I'll point that out here. The wrinkles are this way, but before they were that way. That's my fingerprints. So um, I, I did a, a painting of blood on, on linen with, with, a, with my blood. And this is a, about a day after I, I did it. I have some pictures beforehand, but obviously beforehand it was bright red. And a day later, it's like this. But the thing I want to show is that you get these, these wicking things coming out, running along the threads and, and, and produces so much like little points of, of blood running out the sides. That's, that's here. Then the reverse side, the reverse side is supposed to be of less intensity than the front. And I guess it's, uh, if I had better pictures of the shroud front and back, I could, I could compare it, you know, analytically. You know, how does this after and on the back side compare with the front? But for one thing for sure, this, this is bigger on the front than it is on the back. And on the shroud, they're the same. So there, there's a difference the way it is on the reverse side. And, and that's unlike the shroud. Then what I did is, I was gonna do this on my skin. I wanted to, to dampen the skin and get it in a human environment. But I knew the experiment was gonna last for about 48 hours. So, so I decided to switch over to uh, chicken skin. So I had a whole bunch of pictures showing how the, the, the blood coagulates and dries on the, the, the chicken skin. But one thing I have to say, I did this in a human environment. And it took uh, about two hours. Well, actually, I don't have my notes here, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of, of um, well, they both started coagulating at the same time, whether it's on chicken skin or, or whatever. But uh, this took much longer, and that was because it was in the human environment. Uh, so then what I did is I, I put um, linen on top of this, and, uh, and th this, was, this was two hours after it was put on. It was still damp. But what I did is I put a little bit of water on the top of this. Then I put the, the, the linen on top of that. And then I held it down on, all around the perimeter. I held the, the linen in close contact with the blood. 
And uh, I'll show you, this is after, after I remove the linen, but the next slide will show a more detailed view. Now, this, this, looks, this looks like maybe a picture of a moon with craters on it and so on, but, but it's, actually, it's actually flat. It, it's just the way the blood and things are there that give it the Im impression that it's uh, textured. And over here, that, that dot right there, it's no blood on there at all. And then this is the mirror image of the, the uh, side that was in contact with the blood. So that area that's missing blood corresponds to the side that was in contact with that. And there's a lot of blood there. So I pulled all the blood off when I pulled the linen off. And uh, where, where there's nothing along here, that corresponds to the blood here. And then there's, there's another area here, and that corresponds to where the blood transferred to the linen. Uh, those that have good eyes can see that the blood that remains have a whole bunch of little little fibers sticking out. Well, that was from the the linen. I actually pulled away fibers from the linen when I pulled the linen off the blood. And then this is the reverse side. That's not too bad. Uh, the interesting thing is, though, well, I, I let me come back to this. The only places where blood was transferred were the high spots of the fibers. You know how fibers go up and down, up and down. Well, where they were closest and in contact, that's, that's, where, that's where the blood was transferred. And I'll show you later that, that I confirm that. The reverse side, uh, of course, on this detailed view, you can't say that much, but definitely the, the blood sort of wicked out bigger than in the front. Now here's, here's an experiment I did. I, I, I took a piece of leather, and again, this is a long experiment, so I couldn't use my own skin. Took a piece of uh, leather, I put blood on it. This is, this is actually pig blood. And then I put aloe on it. I wanted it to stay moist. See, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, now, what do we do here? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're behind a few, so I gotta go ahead. Um, I was gonna say something about this. Um, what was it? Oh, well, we'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, I was there. Now, now we're at the, le at the leather. I put pig blood on the leather. This is about almost an inch in diameter pig blood. And I, I could put water on there, again, like I did with the other blood, but I decided that I would put aloe on. So I put aloe, and the reason I did that is in John 1959, it says that Nicodemus brought aloe and myrrh, so I figured aloe might be better than water. So I used that. <clears throat> then I put it, put um, the linen on top, and I let it go. I'll have to admit that I, my records are not that good, but I'm pretty sure it was 48 hours. Then I pulled the linen off, and this is what remained on the leather. You can see the imprints of the, 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 the linen where it actually pulled away all the way down to the leather and left some blood. You see, that's a, a good indication that the transfer only takes place with contact. And then even more so, Look at the blood that's here. And then look at the transfer. The transfer is missing blood at that corresponding spot. So I measured the linen and I found out that the linen had a little bit, or I mean the leather, the leather had a little bit of dimple in it. 0 0.09 millimeters. That's the thickness of a piece of paper. So if it is farther away than a piece of paper, it doesn't transfer. Uh, this is the edge of what we just saw. We saw that thing that transferred 
to the leather. This is the linen that it transferred to. And you can see that there's no wicking here at all. And this is comparing to the painted blood where you get the wicking. And by the way, uh, this is this. I should have put this at the same magnification because this is this is a much higher magnification than that, and you don't see any wicking here at all. So that's by capillary action; it just pulls the blood along the, the thread. So main observations: painted blood. Well, you saw that. It's not like the shroud; you get wicking. Unlike the shroud, you, you can't get fine detail. The painting with a dry brush, I, I tried, uh, didn't work. I also used uh, an anticoagulant to see if I could, I could do that. But it, 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 acted, it acted pretty, pretty bad. Well, it was better than, than the, the other one. But I didn't pursue that because anticoagulants weren't discovered until the, about the 1700s. It saved me some work. And then, okay, the transferred blood is more like the shroud. The reverse intensity is less than the front. The transfer, no transfer 15 minutes after the blood's dry. And that's a problem. Dampened blood transferred. Intimate contact is absolutely required. And the wrinkling of the skin would make, make it very difficult to, uh, to transfer to an arm. So, the study did not prove that it's not possible to naturally produce images on the shroud, like observed on the shroud. You see, I, could, I, could, I still intend more experiments to show that I can do it, but, but if, I, if I say it can't be done, somebody's going to do it and prove me wrong. Uh, in this study, I say it's very unlikely that the blood on the shroud got there by natural means, like an artist, or, or even, even from a body that was wrapped up with a shroud. And the results suggest additional experiments, which I'm going to do. For now, it's assumed that the blood got on the shroud by a miraculous event, as Antonacci proposed and hypothesized. And oh, I have to, I have to give thanks to Steve Williams. Uh, meat market, Keith, Keith, Keith Klein for two arms, Scott Bosworth for two arms, Mark Antonacci for one arm, Mary E. Case who talked to me, and Gilbert Lavoy as I mentioned, and then 19 pigs whose names I don't know. <laughs> No, I thought Art was inviting me over to have Bloody Marys that day. <laughs> <laughs> I went for it, hook, line, and sink. <laughs> <laughs>